Hi, uh, my name is Joe. I'm a technician here at New Life Scientific. Um, we wanted to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about how we refurbish our ultra low temperature freezers, negative 80 degrees Celsius freezers. Um, these are mostly the kind of models we get, Thermo Revco. Um, this time period, usually in newer for the most part. Um, let's kind of dive in here, show you what we do. Bear with me while I turn the old girl around here. Oh. All right. So this is the inside of a typical, of this type of um, ultra low freezer. Um, you have the first stage and the second stage. We tend, our experience has shown that um, first stage is not as picky and it tends to hold up longer than the second stage. The second stage, um, it reaches much lower temperatures. So there's, it tends to be more problems on this, on the second stage than on the first stage. Um, so what we do is when we get these things in, we test them. Uh, we, we test their cooling abilities, how long the compressors run, the current they draw, the compressors draw, all that stuff. Then we make a determination. If the first stage, reaches negative 45 degrees Celsius or negative, negative 50 degrees Celsius in that area within about 10 minutes, we consider the first stage good because that's pretty much all it does. That's all its purpose is it reaches that temperature to pull heat from the second stage. So the second stage we test the same way except for we run the whole thing. We see how cold it gets. If it doesn't reach um, really close to or manufacturers, you know, design temperatures like we, we shoot for negative 86 because it's it's a negative 86 degree freezer that's how cold it can get um, so if it doesn't do that generally we do the flush um, that's how we refurbish these we've tried just checking for leaks evacuating and recharging and generally speaking when you do that with these the older models at least like that have been out for you know 10 15 20 years um, they they don't change you know if it came in at negative 80 degrees celsius that's how cold it was getting we've we've checked for leaks we've evacuated it got all the moisture out of it per manufacturer recommendations recharged it the exact amounts required and you don't get any better performance out of it so we thought we would try what if we took this took all these components out flushed all the lines with alcohol all the components with alcohol the only component we don't flush with alcohol is the compressor. We, uh, we take that out, change the oil, flush it with oil a couple times. Um, and we found out that that works really well. We've done a, we've done a few so far and we, um, we've gotten it down to manufacturers, negative 86, negative 87 degrees Celsius. Um, so we're very confident that this method is, um, is repeatable and shows results much better than wasting your try time trying to evacuate these and recharge them just to get the same results. This takes a little more time, but you, all, you pretty much have a, almost a brand new second stage at that point. We also test the compressors to make sure they build pressure and they pull amps within, within range of what they're supposed to so that they know they're in good shape. Um, so the components we remove, we remove the compressor, we cut lines, that it connect the compressor in here, unbolt it, take it out. We take out the oil separator. Um, we take out the um, expansion device here, the expansion tube. We take out this large expansion tank here. And that's pretty much, that's most of the second. Oh, and we also remove the filter dryer for the second stage. Remind, remember here, we're talking about we're leaving the first stage alone because um, it tested good. So the state, first stage is good. There's no reason to, to, uh, to cut into that. So we're concentrating on the second stage, which is kind of like it is the part of the freezer that is really critical and uh, tends to have the most problems. So we take all those components out. And once we do that, we're left with something like this. All the components are out. This is first stage. This is first stage. That's first stage. So all the second stage components are out. And what we do is we tap into the lines with quick connects and we flush all the lines that are left in the freezer 
all these lines that goes up into the freezer area, all these with alcohol. We flush them for anywhere from half an hour to hours to make sure we get all the contaminants out of the system, build up of anything, you know, especially oil. Oil is kind of the most important thing because the oil gets up in there and the oil goes, it, the oil loses its, its, um, its lubricating abilities and it actually can start to get acidic and get moisture in it. So we want to get all the oil out of the system. So we flush it, we try to get everything out of the system. We get any particles that were in there, hopefully any kind of buildup that was in the lines inside. Flush it real good. And then once we're done flushing it with alcohol, we uh, hook up a nitrogen generator and we run nitrogen through these lines once again for hours to make sure we're evaporating every little last bit of alcohol that was in here. Um, that's why we had to get a nitrogen generator because using bottles of nitrogen to, to purge these lines for hours would be a lot of bottles. So we got a nitrogen generator for that. Oh, here's the back side. There's that filter dryer. Also take all this out, flush it. Um, the components that we took out, we also flush. Um, and here are some of them out of the, out of the unit. We have the, uh, the expansion tank we talked about. We flush this individually, flush the, flush the expansion tube. Any lines that we take out, we flush individually. Um, we talked about the oil separator. We don't um, reuse the oil separators because um, it's just, there's just no way you're really gonna be able to flush these out and get all the contaminants and the old oil out. It's just better to buy a new one. Um, so we replace it with a new one. We replace the filter dryer, same thing. You don't flush a filter dryer. It's, you just have to replace it. So we replace the filter dryer and we usually replace the battery, uh, the backup battery. Um, here's the compressor. What we do with this is we run it outside of the, of the freezer. We get it nice and warm. We dump the old oil out, examine, you know, look at the oil, see what it looks like. It kind of gives us an idea of what's going on in there. Some of them, some of these don't look very good. They look kind of, we've had some that look like, almost like tobacco spit in here. The oil, it just looks terrible. Um, so we run them, get them hot, dump them out, and we put new oil in. We run them, we keep running them, dump it, keep running them, dump it until this oil coming out of here looks like new oil. Um, at that point, it's, it's good, it's flushed. We consider that flushed out and we fill it up. It's ready to get put back in. Um, here is our, our alcohol flushing machine we use. Um, we fill this up, probably about two gallons of alcohol and we flush all of the components that we talked about, the, the tubing in the, in the freezer that are still there, all that. We flush them all out with alcohol thoroughly until it looks lovely coming out of there. And then to make sure, cause you don't want any of the alcohol left in there after you're done. Uh, it will not, it will not uh, function well. So we purge, we purge the, uh, all the lines and components with our nitrogen generator. And we can let the, we let that thing run for sometimes hours to make sure we get all the alcohol dried out, purged out of there. Um, then, so after that's all done, we clean up. So this is typically what it will, what it'll look like when we're done. We'll go ahead and go in here and clean this up real good. Um, then at this point, the components are all ready to be put back in the system. Um, brazed in. Um, we do a pressure test at that point to make sure there's no leaks from all the brazing we did and all, putting all the components in. Um, we evacuate it with our vacuum pumps to manufacture spec um, under, under 200 microns um, for at least 20 minutes. It has to hold that once the vacuum is off. So sometimes it may take hours or days for this, for this second stage to be evacuated and reach the uh, the manufacturer's spec for, um, for moisture. So we do that and then we recharge it um, and run the unit and verify that it performs like it should basically perform brand new. Um, and it works great. We've had great success with these as far as the reliability of them and the performance. I mean, you can see we've had some of these things come in that um, barely cooling and you get, um, you get performance out of them like pretty much like they're new. It's very impressive. Um, so I think we found 
instead of messing around trying to evacuate and recharge and evacuate recharge well we can't get all that you can't get it to, to perform any better so we're like we're just going to take it apart flush it out get every single last contaminant we can out of the system um, put in new filters oil separator all that stuff and and try it out and see how it works and it's been amazing um, yep that's pretty much our process um, uh, we we're constantly working through these we probably have 20 or 30 freezers right now uh, and we're working through pretty much each one is going to receive that treatment for the most part unless like I said unless they they're um, unless they're really old and they're not worth the time or they perform like new and if they don't perform like new then they're gonna get the treatment um, so yeah we'll have them we're gonna have them coming out here um, constantly so um, thanks a lot for watching hope you enjoyed the little demonstration. Um, thanks.